everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here then my name is Lucy and I'm a third year medical student at the University of Nottingham. Today's video is another video about medical school and what I'm going to be doing today is explaining to you exactly how I study at medical school. It sounds a bit strange because if you are subscribed to my channel, and if you're not then please do subscribe to join the Productive Medical School Fund, you will have seen loads of clips of me making notes, using flashcards, revising, you will have seen me do all of that but I feel like I never actually explain what it is I'm actually doing, like how am I actually memorising all of the content, how am I managing to perform well in exams and how am I actually learning it so that I can be a good doctor in the future. So to make it easier to explain how I actually study in medical school, I've decided to break this video down into three sections and they are the stages of my sort of learning process. And so my three stages of learning are as follows. Number one, familiarising. Number two, consolidating. And number three, mastering. Let's start with familiarising. What do I mean by this? So initially, how you will start to learn about something new is you will go to the lecture or you'll read a textbook. This is the beginning of the learning process. So in this first stage of familiarisation, you're not really worrying about memorising every single thing that you read. You're just getting familiar with the content and you're kind of putting the strategies in place to enable you to later on really memorise all of that information. What I think is so important at this stage and something I've definitely learned throughout medical school is that the most important thing here is that you are understanding. Don't worry about memorising now because you're not going to read something once and memorise it for the rest of your life. The most important thing that is going to underpin all of your learning and your ability to commit these things to your long-term memory is your understanding. And what I've always sort of done and I think is actually quite counterproductive. Um, instead of just sitting in the lecture and trying to really quickly write down everything on the PowerPoint slide and not really thinking about the information but just trying to get it into your notes, this isn't an effective way of starting the learning process. What I would suggest is when you're in lectures to actually sort of sit back and listen and try and understand what's going on. Or similarly, if you like you're learning anatomy from a textbook, then rather than just like whizzing through it and just trying to finish that chapter as quick as you can, actually try and figure out how you're going to understand this as, as a whole. And at this stage, I focus less on like making really pretty notes and getting everything down on paper. And I think I focus more on coming up with strategies of eventually memorising this information. So throughout this video, I'm kind of going to use a few examples like to show you how I build on my learning. So for example, when we learn about endocrinology, we learn about a lot of different disorders. And to be honest, that at the beginning, it was just a lot of different names. We learn about obviously diabetes, Cushing syndrome, Conn syndrome, Addison syndrome. And I remember really thinking, okay, I'm gonna have to come up with a way of remembering how to remember which one of those disorders causes what symptoms. So what I did is I used the words of the diseases to commit to memory what they were. So this will sound a little bit strange, but this is really how I learn a lot of things at medical school. Basically, Addison's disease is a primary adrenocortical insufficiency. So it's when you have a lack of sort of certain hormones in the body. How I remembered it was the ad in Addison's disease is wrong. So you'd think ad means more, so you'd think that that person would have more hormones than usual, but actually they don't, they have less hormones than usual. And so that was my initial way of remembering it. So whenever I saw the word Addison's disease, I would think, okay, so it's the opposite to what I would think it is. So it's not more hormones, it's less hormones. I did the same thing with Conn's syndrome. So Conn's syndrome is when you have an increase in something called aldosterone in the body. So I remembered that con syndrome if someone was conning you then you would think that you were losing out and you'd have less of something but actually it's the opposite again so like addison's disease it's counterintuitive so con syndrome is when you actually have more aldosterone than normal and this sounds like a bit of a weird way of learning things but i really do have to sort of instill some kind of strategy for me to be able to then recall that quickly so obviously some diseases like diabetes are very kind of familiar to everyone 
people have heard of them, they're talked about a lot like in the news and the media, but things like Addison's and Cons, they're not so familiar to us. And so I made this strategy so that I would be able to recall what they were. And then instead of having to memorize all of the symptoms for all of these different endocrine disorders, I just thought I'm just gonna learn the sort of underlying sort of biology. So if I learn that Cons syndrome is high aldosterone, then all I have to do is I have to know what aldosterone does in the body. And then I can figure out what the likely signs and symptoms of the patient will be. So I know, for example, that aldosterone causes your body to retain water and retain sodium. So if someone has high aldosterone then they're going to have increased sodium and they might have hypertension. So instead of trying to memorise just like lists and lists of symptoms, I focus more on sort of really familiarising myself and understanding the underlying processes because then in an exam you're not having to rely on your memory which at the end of the day your memory is going to become very saturated, you're going to feel like there's so many things you need to remember that you can't remember everything. So don't rely on on your memory in the exam, rely a little bit on it, but rely mainly on your understanding so that you are always in a position to be able to work something out. So we're still in the familiarisation stage and what's also important here is to try to sort of accumulate some kind of like prompts. So for example, if you actually know someone with a particular disease, like for example, I know someone who had appendicitis, then that's another good way to commit something to memory. So when you're ever thinking about appendicitis, you can think, oh yeah, my friend had that. And I remember that she had these symptoms and this is what happened to her. You could look at some case studies. You could listen to people talking about their experience of that disease. If it's something you can sort of see clearly on someone's body, then look at photos of it. And obviously the best thing is actually to be able to talk to a patient about it and really sort of see how the disease has affected them. I think sort of seeing in real life a disease and seeing the symptoms in real life really helps you to commit it to memory because then whenever that disease will come up you will always remember that person that you spoke to or that video that you watched or the person that you knew who had it. Um, so that's another really good way to familiarise yourself with the content. Okay, so at this stage I might have made a few notes. What I did throughout third year was I just had a massive Word document and I would just basically like copy and paste things so that I had all the information in one place. In first and second year I would write notes in the lectures. Um, but the next stage of the learning process is to consolidate my learning and this is where I will make my revision resource. So the original notes that I make in lectures, they're not like my final notes that I revise from by any means, they're very rough, I definitely couldn't revise from them. So what I do is depending on the sort of topic and the style of the exam, I will either make flashcards or I will make revision notes. So for me, flashcards I use for things that are very sort of quick fire, like recall, things that I'm just going to have to know. They don't require as much understanding and it's more just things that I will need to just memorise and recall. And then my revision notes are more for everything else. And what's important for me is that I, my memory is quite photographic and so I like to kind of lay things out in a way that I can really sort of memorise. So there's so many ways you can do this, for example, like highlighting key points putting certain things into boxes. If it's something like, let's say you're comparing hyperthyroidism with hypothyroidism, then I often make a list and I will have one on each side and I will be directly comparing in that list the differences. And I just like to organise my notes in a way that is logical to me and makes sense. And I want to make sure that my notes have any of those sort of underlying explanations so that when I'm revising, I can remember how is it that I can like work it out. I also find things easy to remember if you kind of list them or like you categorise them. So an example of this is I remember, actually it was one of the teaching fellows in third year, they did this in their lectures, where whenever they were talking about the investigation, so how you would investigate, let's say, suspected asthma. They would always break it down into investigations that you could do at the bedside, uh, blood tests that you could do and imaging. And if you just always kind of have these like patterns in, your, in like these categories in your head, it makes it just easier to, I don't know, like remember information. So if someone says, okay, how would you investigate COPD, instead of just having to like pull things out of the air, you can think more logically, okay, so what can I do at the bedside that would help me? And then what blood tests could potentially help me? And then what imaging could help me? And any other special tests that could help me? I just think that aids your recall of the information. So in this consolidation stage of my learning, this is when I'm kind of figuring out how I'm really going to memorise it. I'm reminding myself of all the explanations that I've learnt from the familiarisation stage, and I'm laying out all the information in a way that I'm going to easily be able to revise 
from and memorize and this kind of like making of revision resources is something that I will be doing like throughout the year so it's not kind of revision in the sense that two weeks before the exam I'm suddenly going to write out all the notes it's something that as I go I kind of aim to stay on top of my note taking so obviously I'll have my original lecture notes and then I will aim to by the end of that week of lectures to have kind of written that week of lectures up into my revision note style so it's something that I'm always trying to stay on top of and I'm not leaving to the last minute because I want all my revision resources to be ready so that when I do actually come to revising for the exams I've got them ready and I'm not having to like still be making flashcards and then the final stage of my learning process is mastering the material so I now am confident that yeah I can recall a lot of the content but can I actually apply it and I think I think something that's kind of hard to articulate but something that's very important in medicine is that your knowledge has to sort of be two ways and not one way so for example if someone says to you what is Addison's disease and what are the symptoms you would be able to recall that because in your previous learning stages you've learned how to memorize that information but if someone presented a case to you with symptoms and said what could the diagnosis be would Addison's pop up in your brain or not and this is a really important distinction because you have to learn not only what the diseases are but you have to learn how to spot them and how to recognize them you can't consider whether the patient has Addison's disease if you're not even considering it do you know what it's really hard to explain if you're not even going to consider whether it's Addison's disease all that knowledge of you knowing what Addison's disease is isn't going to help you because you're not going to be able to draw on it because you're not even going to think of Addison's in the first place and this is why you need to practice actually mastering the material and you need to practice applying everything that you've learned so the key to being able to do this well is to just practice and practice and practice so obviously exam style questions are going to be one of your best friends so find them wherever you can I know there's loads of sort of things online that people use like past med or past medicine is something people use I haven't personally used it but I've heard that it is really really useful and it really like transforms people's grades definitely do all the mock papers that your medical school give you and also I use this really good app called capsule which I think like your medical school have to actually sort of set you up an account for but basically this app was just like loads and loads of cases so that you could just read a case and answer questions about it and it's just practicing that kind of like clinical reasoning which is really important and then I guess within either the consolidating stage or the mastering stage I'm using my revision resources as well to keep going over the information because obviously although practicing loads of exam questions is really good if certain topics aren't covered by those questions then you might sort of end up neglecting them. So as well in my peak sort of like revision period I am reading over my notes or practicing doing my flashcards like asking myself the question on the flashcard turning it around checking my answer so that brings me to the end of this video I hope you found it useful and I hope it gave you a good insight into how I actually learn at medical school please do remember to subscribe to my channel if you want to join me on my journey becoming a doctor and to get more kind of medical school and productivity tips thank you very much for watching and I will see you very soon for my next video bye